<laughs> I would give Jesus certain areas of my life, but when it came to my sexuality, I did not want him to touch that. MJ, I have known you for such a short time and you've become a dear friend um, and I've just been amazed to watch your growth and see your testimony. Can you tell um, our listeners what this journey is that God has taken you on? Yes, so it starts when I was a little girl. Uh, I always knew from a very young age that I struggled with attraction towards the other little girls. Uh, I grew up in church, so I knew about God, but I didn't, it didn't really hit my heart. So I just really always felt like I like, was far away from God, and he was just looking down upon me. I had an older brother and a younger brother, so I started taking on the attributes of the boys. You know, I wanted to be outside. I started taking on that label of being a tomboy. <laughs> you know, everything rough and tumble, everything that they were doing, that's what I wanted to do. And as I look back on my childhood, I always, as I look at the story of the princesses and the prince, I never wanted to be the princess. I never wanted to be rescued. I always wanted to be the one pursuing the princess and rescuing her. I feel like I had the wrong uh, perspective of a male. That was just confused in my mind because I, I didn't see a lot of strong men in my life. I saw weakness, I saw immaturity, and I said, I don't want anything to do with that. It wasn't until uh, right when I was about to graduate from high school, for the first time in my life, I spoke that I was gay. I really believe that was when it really took root because the word of God says that life or death is in the power of our tongue. to college and I was finally going to be away from the religious structure. I was finally going to be away from my family and I could truly live this out. And I met this woman and I knew right away I had the strongest pull that I've ever had to someone, not expecting anything to happen. But then we were six years later, almost six years in a full relationship. We did everything that couples do. Um, I had everything that I always believed I wanted. I just wanted to have a relationship where I could love someone, have the American dream, live together. I wasn't very promiscuous. I wasn't dating a lot of women. I just wanted that one woman that I could settle down with, and I finally had that. So you're in this relationship for six years. What happened? Well, what's amazing and what we find as we minister to the LGBT community is many, if not majority, have been people who have been raised in church. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the fact with the person that I was a partner with. And um, so we would have our times where we'd actually go to church. I feel like I really received Christ for the first time in the message of the gospel. And she was the one who brought me there. But it took me another three years. He gave me that opportunity to choose him, but I still rebelled. I was in my flesh. And I wanted that relationship. But there was always inside of me a conviction. that MJ I have so much more for you if you would just lay this down and you'd surrender your heart to me I would give Jesus certain areas of my life but when it came to my sexuality I did not want him to touch that I was happy you, you know I was happy. on the road to marriage I was on the road to having raising children and having a partner so what made you take that plunge there's a scripture that says that um, there's not so much that we go through that God cannot give us a way out that we're too deep. I always knew that God would leave the 99 and go after the one. And I would remember I was driving and I was going back and forth between two states because she was in one state and I was in another state. And I just had this moment in the car. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, MJ, are you going to keep doing this to yourself? Are you going to keep hurting? And I remember being in the car and saying, Lord, I can't, I can't do this anymore, just weeping. And I said, Lord, I give you every area. Like, there's no turning back. I'm drawing a line in the sand, and I will serve you with every area with me, with my whole heart. And from that day forward, here I am seven years later, serving the Lord, glorifying Him through my testimony of what only He can do in a heart and a life. Jesus interjected in my life. Mm -hmm. and 
what he offered was so much more and so much greater than any just short, fleshly, earthly desire that I was trying to satisfy in myself. What's the difference in MJ pre-born again, radically saved by Jesus Christ, and after? I can sum it up in two words, from selfish to selfless. Because that's when the kingdom invades you. All of a sudden, you're not thinking about you, but you're thinking about your brother and your sister. You're thinking about the people that don't know him. They don't know his goodness. They don't know his kindness. When you really taste and see that the Lord is good, there's just nothing out there that can satisfy. You know, try to fill it with the drugs. Try to fill it with the alcohol. Try to fill it with the wild parties. Try to fill it with the people. But that's all idols. And they all will fall. And none will satisfy that gaping hole that we have in our soul to be connected with our Creator. So what is your life like now? What are you doing? Uh, tell us a little bit about how God is using you. Yes, yeah, so when I came to know uh, the Lord, the first verse He gave me, and He said it would be a foundational verse for me, was Genesis 50, 20. And it says, you meant to harm me, but God mm. used your evil for good to save the lives of many people, which is being done. And the Lord showed me that everything that was sown for my destruction, he was then going to turn around so that I would reach people in the same struggle, going through the same things because I can look someone in the eyes and I can understand their struggle. And then uh, the Lord had me create a nonprofit called Uprooted Heart. And he showed me he took my heart and he uprooted it from this deception of homosexuality and he planted me new in his garden to flourish. Our mission is to share testimonies of men and women who have overcome this lifestyle of LGBTQ and just uplift their stories and shed light on a group and a population of people that have a voice as well and a different narrative that yes, God can set you free. Yes, you can have freedom in Christ from homosexuality. You don't have to struggle with same-sex attraction your whole life. Speak to parents of gender confused children. What would you say to them? If you're a parent out there with a gender confused child, first of all, I want to say that you are there to stand in the gap and God hears your prayers. Don't give up. The enemy wants you to feel hopeless and helpless, but we know that no situation is hopeless and helpless with Jesus Christ. I'm a manifestation of my parents' prayers and them believing for my true identity. So speak the word over your child. Believe the truth of who they are and see the chains break over their lives. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing with us. God bless you. Yes, you too. I am MJ Nixon and this is my story.